Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number six in the Business Logic Vulnerabilities module titled Inconsistent Handling of Exceptional Input. All right, let's get started. This lab doesn't adequately validate user input. You can exploit a logic flaw in its account registration process to gain access to administrative functionality. To solve the lab, access the admin panel and delete Carlos. So the target goal over here is to exploit some kind of business logic flaw in the account registration function, which will allow us to escalate our privileges to administrator and then delete the Carlos user. All right, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp. And so all my requests are already being recorded in my Burp proxy. Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna do is try to find the admin panel that the exercise is talking about. If you were using the professional version in Burp, what you could do is go to target and then go to the application and then click on engagement tools and select discover content so that it tries to find um, other directories that are not directly visible in the application but we're using the professional version. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply try and fuzz the application and see if we could find the admin directory. So the first thing that I'm gonna try is slash admin, hit enter. And it looks like that is a valid directory because we get the message admin interface only available if logged in as a don't wanna cry user. So it could see over here that we're not logged in as a user and it tells us that the admin panel, which is available at the slash admin endpoint, is only available to users that are under the don't wanna cry domain. So let's hit the register functionality and try to register a user with this specific email address. Now, if it doesn't validate that this email address really belongs to me by sending me some kind of registration link, then I should be able to access the admin functionality once I create the account. So let's say test, and then let's say test at don'twannacry.com, and then test again, and hit register. It says, please check your emails for your account registration link. Let's see if it'll allow me to log in without clicking on that registration link because I don't have access to that email address. So test and then test again. And it says invalid username or password. So that didn't work. You do have to confirm your registration by clicking on the email that is sent to you. And so I need to use an email that I have access to. Now, the nice thing about the Web Security Academy is it's usually self-sufficient, uh, meaning that everything that you need is in the Academy itself. And so it already gave you access to an email address and anything that gets sent to the email address would appear over here. And you could see over here, it says it also displays all emails that are for this specific uh, domain and all subdomains. So that'll come in handy in a bit. Let's use this email address. And again, let's register test one. And then the email address is attacker at exploitserver.net. And then the password, let's say is test and hit register. It tells me to check for the registration link. Hit enter. This looks good. We get the registration link. Let's enter it over here. And it says account registration is successful. And now I should be able to log into my account. So test one and then test, hit login. And it tells me your email address is attacker at so-and-so.net. All right, so if we go to the post request right over here, uh, you could see it takes in a CSRF token and then the username and password, and it displays the um, account page for you. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to access the admin panel again from over here, but it likely won't work because I don't have an email address that is registered with the don't wanna cry domain. And so I need to find an exploit and I need to find a vulnerability in the application that allows me to register a user under that domain. Now, if we go back to the register functionality and see how it works, you could see over here, it's a post request. It takes in the username, the email address, and the password. So it doesn't look like this itself is vulnerable. So one thing that you could try is see if the application validates user input over here. 
And the way I'm going to do that is by sending it exceptionally high input and seeing if the application accepts that input. So I'm going to go to my account again and then log out. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to click on register. And let's say test two. And then again, test at test.ca. And I think we use test.ca. So let's say test two at test.ca. And then password is test, hit register. Let's take this post request, send it to repeater. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my user supplied email address, which is this one over here. Let's copy that. Put it in here and URL encode the at sign, so percent 40. And I'm going to send this to intruder. Now in Intruder, we're going to automate the process of sending um, an input with a large number of characters. So the first thing we're going to do is clear everything over here. And then I'm going to highlight this. And then I'm going to go to payloads. And then from payloads, I'm going to say character blocks. And um, what this will do is it'll add the character A 100 times in the first request. And then I'm going to ask it in each request to increase that character count by 100. So in the first request, it'll do 100 times. In the second request, it'll do 200 times. In the third request, it'll do 300 times and so on. So my guess is if we go up to 500 and it doesn't give me an error, that means there's no validation on the number of characters that the email address can have. So let's click on start attack. Click OK. And it looks like we got the same length of response. And so my guess is it worked. Let's see if we get the uh, registration email and we do. So you, you could see over here we did it five times and so we have five different registration emails. So I'm going to click right over here and click on my account and log into that account to see if the email address really worked. So uh, the request we were performing was a username called test2 and the password was test and you could see over here this is the email address. So username was test2 and password was test, hit login. And this is interesting. So over here, it tells me your email address is just this right over here. But the email address that I put in here was this entire thing. So we definitely have characters missing, which means that it's truncating a portion of my input. And that might be really helpful for me to be able to bypass certain controls in the application. So let's see how many characters it accepts. So let's copy this entire string right over here and put it in here. And let's highlight all of this. You could see over here in Visual Studio, it counts uh, the number of characters. So we have 255 characters, which means after the 255th character, it truncates everything that is um, in the email. And so to trick the application into thinking that I have a don't want to cry email address, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Burp and copy my domain name, which is this one right over here. The zero is part of the URL encoding. I'm going to put a dot and then I'm going to put don't want to cry dot com. And we'll need an at sign right over here. So the idea over here is to register using an email address that contains my domain so that the email gets sent to my domain. However, when the application sets your email address, what it's going to do is if you have a correct number of characters over here, it should truncate everything that is after the 255th character. And so I need to make sure that the M is the 255th character and the rest gets truncated. So to do that, how many characters is this? That's 17 characters. So we're looking at 
255 minus 17, which is equal to 238. So I need to put 238 A's before this at sign. So let's copy that and look for 238 A's. And here we go. Let's copy that here and put it in here. All right, so now because the application does not handle exceptional input properly, what's going to happen is once it reaches the 255th character, it'll truncate everything else. And so it should truncate this entire thing. And so it'll appear to my application that I do have an account that is um, under the don't want to cry domain. So let's copy this. And this is such a clever vulnerability to uh, exploit. Let's go here. Go to repeater and then actually the session id and the csrf token probably changed and so let's log out click on register again this time let's say test four and again test at test let's say 5.ca it doesn't really matter and then test click register I just need this post request for the new session ID and the new CSRF token. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the email address with the email address that I just created. And you might need to URL encode certain characters. So the at sign definitely needs to be URL encoded. So percent 40 and hit send. You get a 200 OK if you click on render. It says, please check your emails for your account registration link. If we go back to our exploit server, we should see a new email and we do. So click on register. It successfully registered the account. So I'm going to go to my account and then log in. And that was test four. And then the password was test, hit login. And we made a mistake. So you could see over here, it added a dot sign, which means that we're missing one more A. And so it's seeing me as under the domain at don'twannacry.com dot. However, I need to be at just at don'twannacry.com. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more A. And we could actually, we'll have to redo that in Burp. So let's copy that. Go back to Burp. Log out from here. Go to proxy. Go to register again. Let's say test six and then test six at test.ca and then test again and then use that post request and send it to repeater. And then in repeater, just replace the email address with the one that we just created. And this should have the correct number of A's. So percent 40. Hit send. We get a 200 OK. That's good. Let's go to our exploit server. And we get a new email. Let's click on it. Click register. Actually click my account. And then log in using that account. So test 6. And then the password was test, hit login. And okay, so we've got the correct domain and you could see the admin panel is now visible to us because the application sees us as a user that has an email address in the don't wanna cry domain. All right, so now we access the admin panel and we have the ability to delete users. So we'll delete Carlos. And here we go, it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually. Usually we script the vulnerability in Python. However, because this does require having access to your own email client, and I like my uh, scripts to be self-sufficient, that means I would have to create my own email client and then parse it and then extract the email from there. And I'm pretty sure the Academy doesn't allow you to use any random email client. Plus the scripting portion would be way out of scope for these videos. And so for this video, we won't be scripting the exploit in Python. In the next video, we'll look at a more complex case of a business logic vulnerability.
If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.